Hello everybody, my name is Trevor Selescu. And I'm the owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. Are you looking for a great gift idea for somebody on your shopping list? Today, we will be looking at the 1976 Chevrolet Corvette Street Custom by AMT Ertl. Now this one's out of my own personal collection. However, you can see all of our available model kits at www.monster-hobbies.ca. I will leave a link in the description below. Now let's go down to our bench and see what's in the box. Now we roll the clock all the way back to 1976, where we get to take a look at the AMT Street Customs 1976 Corvette. And if I'm not mistaken, this car originally came out as Farrah Fawcett's Foxy Vet, which means it would have been custom created by George Vera Studios. This version of this model car came out in 2007 from RC2 Brands. It is a skill level 2 kit which is moderate for ages 10 and up and you will need glue and paint to complete this model. This side of the car shows the model builder's build of it. As you can see the nice 3 quarter rear view, you get the cool looking vents in the window as well as 6 tail lights and these amazing fender flares. There's our 350 cubic inch Chevy motor and our custom interior right there. And now we can remove the lid on our 76 Chevy Corvette Street Custom and see what's in the box. So here right away we get our cool looking instruction sheet. There is a nice Corvette thing from RC2. Then we get our plastic components in various bags. A decal sheet which we'll take a look at at the end. There's our cool looking Corvette body. Chrome components. Lots of parts trees in this kit. And then of course we get a bag with our tires and red tail lamps. Here we have our instruction sheet for our 76 Corvette Street Custom. And as you can see it folds out quite a bit into a lot of various pages. So we will look at this panel by panel. Our first panel shows our engine assembly going together. Here we have the left and right hand side engine block our oil pan, front water pump cover, and our cylinder heads. Once we finish assembling those components, you can add on your valve covers and your intake manifold as well as your carburetor and starter motor. We can complete our engine by adding on the right and left hand side exhaust manifolds, our alternator, pulleys and belt, as well as our fan. And now we can get up and boogie, that's right, as we take a look at our interior. Now we do have the typical Corvette interior bucket, our bucket seats which drop into the tub, and then our shifter, steering wheel with console, and our instrument panel. Here's an interesting write-up that I found in figure 4. It says the Eckler Corvette is a custom beauty designed to showcase some of the more popular aftermarket Corvette parts. As a custom, the interior and exterior may be painted any color or combination of colors desired. However, some painting tips are given that may prove helpful. After the parts are painted and the paint has thoroughly dried, the assembly can begin. So now we know this is an Eckler Corvette. So here it shows the wheel and tire preparations. So first you carefully remove the web from our tires. And then down here it shows you how to paint your wheels. Our next panel shows our wheel and tire and axle assembly. So as you see here, now that our wheels and tires are prepped up, we can put the outer wheel into the tire and then glue it to the inner wheel add in our axle spindles right here and our axle pin will go into the back. So make sure you don't get any glue in here so that your wheels will rotate and not lock into those axle pins. The rear wheel assembly is just as groovy, only not as complicated, as we just put our wheel outer into our tire and then cement it to our wheel back. Now our wheels have to glue onto something, so before we lose our mind in Detroit Rock City, we have our rear chassis assembly, so this is the rear suspension, which has the lower differential and rear springs inside it. Then we've got our rear axle going here, and our upper differential case. All of this will glue together, and there you'll have your wheels. 
Now be careful not to get glue in here because your wheels will rotate on the axle. Now we move into figure nine with the subassembly A. This is of course the front of our chassis, just the first part of it. So we are gonna put our wheels down here. We're gonna add in our springs and our lower A arms. And here we have the nice frame cross member which will all glue onto the chassis. Subassembly B completes the front of our chassis and gets us going on the back by adding in the front stabilizer bar and our tie rod. Now I do believe these wheels are fully posable, so that's always fun. Then we've got our rear differential and suspension assembly. You got our right and left control arms, rear stabilizer and our shocks. And again, all of this attaches to the chassis assembly. Chassis subassembly C is very straightforward. All we need to do is add our rear wheels to the back, put our drive shaft in and the assembled engine and it all drops into the front of the chassis and then followed off by our spare tire carrier which glues onto the back. In our next subassembly, we get into the underhood components which includes our radiator, our fan shroud, our inner wheel wells and our firewall all being glued onto the chassis. We now carry on into our body assembly and this is quite a conglomeration of all kinds of groovy custom components. Here we have our regular body inside and then you can add on these fender flares front and back as well as our rear bumper, add in a rear spoiler, there is a hatchback lid, high rise hood, front fascia, air dam and our headlight housings. Next up we have our very groovy decal application. This of course is optional, but here it shows the decals for the hood, license plate, and on the side of the fenders. Our next image shows our body, glass, interior, and chassis all going together as one big unit. Our next panel begins our final assembly with our exhausts. And here we have the little exhaust pipes which go onto our side pipes. And you do get a choice between the custom or the other custom style of side pipe. Our engine bay assembly gets finished off in this step with an ignition shield for our distributor, air cleaner, upper radiator hose, and air intake duct. Out back we add in our six bubble tail lamp lenses hatchback window, hatchback lid, and Monza gas cap. You can also put in optional rear window louvers and optional hatchback support struts so that you can have the whole hatchback lifted up. Our final panel shows the hood going into place, rear view mirrors left and right, as well as headlamp covers. But before you put these on, don't forget to add in your four headlights up into here. Now this car should go where the music takes you. This thing actually looks really cool. I do like the uh, extended fastback roof it's got in here with the hatchback end to it. You can see again our sugar scoops which is uh, very uh, telltale for these Corvettes. Although the sugar scoop is kind of different from the stock one. Then what else do we have? The cutouts for the flip up headlights. There is a bit of a ridge on the edge of the fenders here, which of course can be easily sanded out. Up underneath, it is pretty smooth. There are a couple of mold marks under here, a couple of little pins and whatnot, which I think will help keep the hood in place and the body locked into the back on the interior, whatever's going on. But overall, I mean, this does look pretty good for a very custom one-off Corvette. Nine gray plastic parts trees make up this model kit. Here are the first six. And here are the remaining three. The first sprue tree we can look at is the one that contains the chassis and the drive shaft. There is a TMGM, trademark General Motors, which of course you could sand this off very easily just to make it look a little more accurate. As you can see, the chassis has a lot of details on here, which are quite nice. Turning it over, slight mold marks, not too bad. And again, pretty nice for the quality. Next up, we can look at the interior tub and you can see all the little compartments and hatches in as well as some pretty nice detail on the door panels. Center console looks correct. And we do get our pedals for the standard transmission inside there. There is some carpet texture in and you can see sink marks or mold marks inside and then we've got our Corvette steering wheel in the bag. This is the accurate one for 1976. 
The steering wheel was also shared with the Chevy Vega at the time. But again, overall, I'm quite impressed with the quality of this part. Our next parts tree includes the louvers for the rear window, the axle, the anti-sway bar, and our air duct. This parts tree gives us the lowdown on our engine components. Right and left hand side engine block with transmission, cylinder heads, valve covers, starter, fan, radiator hose, shocks, oil pan, belts and pulleys, front engine cover, and our exhaust manifolds. Bringing this up to the camera, you can see the nice detail on all these components. And again, very nice casting by AMT. Our next parts tree gives us our Corvette hatchback, four barrel carburetor, air cleaner, intake manifold, front grill and nose, as well as our wheel aprons. Our next parts tree contains our dashboard with our radio, and there's going to be some rocking. Some rocking tonight. You can see how nice this is. Of course, we have our map pockets right there, and then we've got our suspension components with our front spindles with the disc brake calipers on them, as well as our A arms and our rear arms, and then all the different suspension components like tie rod and stabilizer. Some mold marks on the back of the dashboard, but again, you could always take them out with your number 16 hobby blade. Our next parts tree includes some really groovy custom body pieces like our headlight housings and the front fenders here with the sugar scoops on them, as well as our radiator, fan shroud, spare tire cover, and the center brace. Now looking at these nice fenders, you can see all the uh, streamlining and aerofoils on them and whatnot. Ground effects, they'd be known as now. And again, very cool stuff, especially for that vintage when all this was sort of a new thing. And carrying on, here we have our rear fender flares. And again, they carry on the sugar scoop. So you actually get two per side, as well as our rear spoiler, our rear differential, and our firewall. Let's just take a look at that firewall. There are some nice details on it, as you can see. And again, the front or the rear fenders are looking quite nice. Underneath some mold marks. Not too hard to take them out though. Here we have our final gray parts tree, which here we have our final gray parts tree, which includes the rear bumper with the six tail lights, as well as our bucket seats, wheel back, and our hood. One thing I'll say about this rear bumper is if it didn't have the extra taillights in and actually had a little split in the middle with Corvette on the back, this would be our closest representation to that 1974 rear bumper for our Corvette. So you could use this with a little bit of modifications as it does not have the little bumperettes on there, which was a 1974 style bumper. But anyway, look at the nice detailing on those seats. And if we turn this upside down, the bottom of our hood is pretty smooth, but there are some mold marks you need to take care of. Same on the backs of these seats. But overall, once again, this will make a really cool looking Corvette. Here we have our chrome parts tree, and for a custom, there's not too much chrome going on, but then this was 1976 as well. Here you can see those beautiful wheels. And then we've got our different lake pipes going on here, as well as the front headlights and a bunch of other really groovy components. Take a look at those nice wheels. Are they not the best you can see in Corvette? <laughs> and there's those side pipes. Again, these are factory style and these are more the drag racing style. So very nicely done. Chrome looks pretty decent. And again, nice work. Here we have our transparent glass components, as well as our six red tail lamps. And here you can see the hatchback glass, the front windshield, and the covers for our headlights. And again, it's nice that AMT put them in a bag so that they wouldn't get scratched. Our custom Corvette rides on some really nice Goodyear Polyglass GT tires. These, of course, are the old AMT standby. What's nice is that they remove that web for you. And you can easily put these in your tire spinner and sand down that tread. And last but not least, we have our decal sheet. And it's time for the big reveal. Now here, these may only look like black stripes, but they are actually black with a white border around them, which would be very groovy for the vintage. Here we have some Arizona I Dare You license plates, as well as some Hawaii KN602s 
and our Corvette magazine style license plate. And that completes our look at the AMT Ertl 1976 Chevy Corvette Street Custom. And if you've built this model kit in the past, we would sure love to see your photos over on our Facebook page, and I will leave the link for that in the description below. Well, I hope you enjoyed that unboxing video of the 1976 Corvette Street Custom by AMT Ertl. Tune in next week when we open up the lid on another great model kit. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Hit that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you're the first to see it. And until next time, happy model building!